Hey, my name is Chris Droz, and I'm the founder of Bleecker Street Research. Um, I'm going to be talking about bad actors in the financial markets and how I track them. I think tracking bad actors is so important because it's one of the highest probability tells in the financial markets. I think we're always looking for uh, things that have a really high signal to noise ratio. And, you know, some of these people, you can reliably say uh, things that they are involved in will end up 90% lower 98% of the time. And that's about as high of a probability as you're going to get. So, you know, you're looking at past outcomes and you're using that to sort of predict the future. And these people lay out what they do, what they've done in the past and how they failed, and they're always back for more. So, you know, this is an extremely high probability sort of um, investment strategy. Unfortunately, it's a very volatile path that you then have to manage. But, you know, when you know the when you know the end outcome going into a situation, you're always going to have an advantage. So I think it's one of the highest probability sort of tells that you can find. The bad actors can be anyone from auditors, transfer agents, uh, former CFOs, investors, other investors that have track records of ending up in these things that are promotions. You put them all together and you see what they have done in the past. In terms of past examples, there was a company called Elio Motors and they made they were trying to make a three-wheeled trike. It was supposed to be a fuel efficient vehicle. It was uh, one of the first Reg A plus offerings. And there was a developer uh, behind the deal. He was a board member, a significant shareholder. And this company was never able to get a vehicle to production. It went public in 2016. It raised money. It was it needed to raise a substantial amount of capital to enter production. And it never was able to get as much capital as they needed. And in 2018, when initial coin offerings were hot, um, they tried to do one of those and it failed. Well, this same developer is um, now involved with another publicly traded company that's also seeking a large loan to build out assets. And they have so far not been able to raise that the amount of money that they need. When NFTs were briefly popular in you know March and April, this company announced an NFT offering and the NFT failed. So, you know, it was a it was not a successful offering. So, you know, you look at these past outcomes and they help you they help you identify what's going to happen in the future. So this company spiked when they did the ICO in 2018 and then it fell. And this company today did the exact same thing, had the same trading pattern. It went up 200 percent when they did their uh, when they released announced their NFT and the NFT happened. It was a failure. and The stock is down from there. So, you know, these are high probability um, outcomes and by, you know, the past kind of informs your ability to assess what's happening in presently and in the future. How I track them, it could be anything from, you know, looking at SEC litigation, that's a fun list to look at every week. Um, but really it's, it's just looking at things that happened in the past and seeing who is involved with them. So if a company blows up, files bankruptcy unexpectedly, um, is charged with accounting fraud, you know, I, I look at that auditor, I put it on the list. If I see it pop up a couple more times, you know, that's now in my mind, look, these people could be great people. They could be wonderful neighbors, but for whatever reason they have in the capital markets, they are associated with companies that have a high likelihood of falling. And, you know, I have nothing against them, but I, you know, use their presence in sort of filings and the company to, to sort of inform my investment decisions. You know, when it comes to adding names to the list, um, you just kind of have to immerse yourself in the kind of world of small cap fraud um, or small cap promotion, whatever you want to call it. But once you're immersed in that world, you know, you see who's presenting at the conferences, um, you see who's using which auditor, who's using which transfer agent, who uses, you know, who the people are involved with and what they have done in the past. So, you know, like if you see a SPAC with a management team that, you know, has presided over three bankruptcies, um, that's how I'm getting to that point. Now they're on the bad actor list, so to speak. Um, you know, I follow them. I follow them on LinkedIn. I, you know, have a separate LinkedIn that's, you know, not tied to myself, but it's, you know, if someone gets an invite, I'm going to see what they're doing in three years. And a lot of these stories are utterly ridiculous. And sometimes they make it back to the public markets. And 
that should give you a good identifier. For example, um, this is way in the past, but um, American Addiction Centers, they went public in 2008, filed filings for six months, went dark. You know, it was very thinly traded. Market cap was probably below 25 million. But in 2015, it was back with a almost billion dollar market cap and it was, you know, a real IPO. So, you know, these are the kinds of things where, you know, the people were the same people. Um, it, you know, you saw what happened, you saw how the business changed, you know what they've done in the past, you know the outcomes. And, you know, these people are good at raising money. They're good at telling a story. So it's about figuring out the holes in that story and figuring out when that is going to crack. You know, when you kind of identify a bad actor, I come across them, you know, it goes in the database, I set up text alerts for SEC filings, and, you know, and it's lawyers, transfer agents, auditors, people, you know, but there's certain investors that, you know, 27, they've appeared in 27 different SEC filings for 27 different companies. 26 of those have gone bankrupt. You know, I got an alert last week that this, you know, individual was in another SEC filing. You know, and that gives me a high probability of confidence that the same outcome will happen. Of course, just because their name is in an SEC filing does not mean like you have to run out and short it right away. These things have a promotional cycle. So, you know, these enablers, they are trying to make money for themselves and they're using the capital markets to do so. And they need their stock price to go higher or want their stock price to go higher. And there's a lot of factors that are outside of your control. So just because something is a fraud or something has bad people involved with it does not make it short right away, right? There is a promotional cycle. These things um, are created. They, you know, then follow the kind of traditional hype cycle. And really what I look for is when the enablers of the scheme are no longer incentivized to make the stock price go up. So whether that be, you know, insider selling um, or, you know, things that move on to, you know, people, people moving on, they've cashed out of the company, you know, or when the story that they're telling starts to be questioned by other people. Because um, a lot of the people, you know, every every stock is different, but a lot of these companies that we've seen, and especially in the past year, are enabled by a very passionate shareholder base. And so, you know, you have to put yourself in the shoes of the people that are long the stock. You have to figure out what they care about. What they care about is often different than what I care about, but I still believe in the eventual outcome. And so what they care about, I have to try and understand that and figure out when those things are going to change. So the bad actors kind of lead, you know, they, it leads you to the water. It leads you to where the opportunity is. And then you have to understand what the other people, what the people on the other side of your trade uh, kind of care about. And it's usually not what I care about. Um, but I have to understand that and I have to respect that because that's, you know, for a short to actually go down, you need people to sell and people sell when, you know, they've lost faith in something. You have to wait and you have to watch and you have to understand what they care about and you have to track those things and you have to respect them, I think, because, you know, they are the people that are driving the stock price higher, the people that believe they're buying the stock, you know, you need them to sell and once they sell the stock starts going down so i try and understand what people on the other side of the trade care about um and when that promotional cycle breaks you know i'm ready with the stock that i think has a high probability of falling substantially because of the people involved i think that regulators if they were doing their job my source of alpha would not exist and it probably shouldn't exist but unfortunately is tied directly to human nature and that is something that really doesn't change. So I'll give you one quick example. In the 1890s, there was a bicycle bubble in Britain. The number of bicycle makers that went public shot up tremendously. So everyone, it was a new method of transportation. It was exciting. And this guy named John Ackles, um had a bicycle plant that he had been trying to sell for 10 years unsuccessfully. So he partnered with a guy that had just gotten out of jail, was uh, actually doing an ostrich feather import fraud. Um, which I think is hysterical. So they took this company public and how they took it public was they created another entity and they ordered 20,000 bicycles from this from the company that was going public. It went public with this 20,000 bicycle order. And I think you've seen, you know, over 100 years later, the exact same thing play out with Lordstown Motors, where it went public with this large order that turned out to be, you know, probably not there. Um, 
and there's an SEC investigation now, I think. And, you know, but that's 150 years of human nature and the story, the fundamental outcome is exactly the same. It's human nature. We want to believe in these stories. We want to believe in what people are telling us is true. Um, unfortunately, it just isn't a lot of the times. And there are always going to be people that take advantage of that and can profit off of that, unfortunately. Thank <laughs> you.